Right, so up until this point in time, if you've been following the content um, as regards Python, ZeroMQ, and MetaTrader 4, then we've arrived at the point where we are going to develop a trading strategy um, using all the code we have. So in previous tutorials, blog posts, etc., we've developed Python client application necessary for uh, doing the executions. Um, we've got a MetaTrader 4 server EA that is responsible for receiving instructions from client applications, in our case, the Python application. Uh, processing them, parsing them, making sure they are valid, executing them, and sending the response from that execution back to Python. Really simple. So we've got, we've established the necessary code and framework to perform this activity. We're, we're at that point now. So now we have to take all of this and make something that uh, performs a function that performs trading action so enough with the theory enough with all the hey we need to do this hey we need to do that let's get to the meat of it and put all of this together into a trading strategy first let's discuss what we need in order to do that we're going to come up with a trading strategy that's rather simple the famous the infamous coin flip example that everybody uh, loves to do uh, we're going to follow the cliche and do it ourselves so here we're going to design a coin flip trading strategy we'll write the code for this shortly as well using all the other code parts uh, that we've written so far python and mql so in this coin flip trading uh, strategy we want to achieve a few things. We want to have a few traders with uh, the ability to trade, and we want, let's say, a few traders, and each trader um, will be assigned one symbol, gets one symbol to trade, okay? And we're not going to do any dynamic lot sizing in this example. That will be in future future tutorials where we'll develop as we go along from this introduction onwards, we're going to develop increasingly complex uh, strategies with various different types of rationale uh, in them. But for this first example, to demonstrate how you actually put a strategy together in code, we're going to do a very simple example to get the fundamentals right. So coin flip trading is going to involve a trader who gets one symbol to trade. We're going to fix the lot size for every trader to 0 0.01 they're going to send an order uh, send a trade instruction with a lot size set to 0 0.01 there's also another restriction that the max number of trades that each trader can trade is equal to one so no trader can trade more than one trade at any given time and since we want to make it slightly interactive we want to get things going really fast and see the activity on metatrader uh, instead of waiting for the next trade to signal to come through and uh, for executions to happen the coin flip example is quite quite appropriate for that sort of interactive fun setting Mind you, this this coin flip trading example will result in a losing strategy. So the the point of this uh, tutorial is not tutorial is not to generate a uh, winning strategy. It's to demonstrate how to create a strategy in the first place using the Python zero MQ uh, connector and the corresponding MQL bridge. So max number of trades set to one, lot size set to zero point zero one. And that's pretty much it. And the choice buy or sell will literally be a coin flip and in python we're going to achieve this by you by importing the random module and inside random we have a function called get rand bits and we're going to pass it the number one which will send us an output of either zero or one and this zero or one we will use as our buy or sell and that's it. Really simple coin flip trading example where a trader gets to uh, have one symbol to trade with one trade at any given time. And because we want to make it interactive and, and sort of things flying around on the screen a little bit, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to set a little uh, deadline, an expiry for each trade. So we're going to say that not only should the trader trade only one trade at any given time, the trader needs to close the trade after five seconds in execution close the trade after 
five seconds. So that gives us um, quite a few things flying around the screen. So you'll have trades going into MetaTrader, trades coming out of MetaTrader, open, close, open, close, and it'll give us a good sort of interactive example of how this is working. It'll also give us uh, uh, an idea of the latency involved between instructions from an external application like a Python trading strategy to MetaTrader via Zero MQ. So there's a reasoning, there's, there's a reason behind my choice for, for these sorts of variables here using one trade per person person and uh, setting things to uh, five seconds and no longer etc 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 so for all of this to happen we need to uh, we need to be able to r write a few sort of helper scripts. I've already written those for you. And those hel helper scripts will basically take care of some of the nitty gritty involved. So when you're looking for a response, you want to parse the response, you want to wait for MetaTrader, MetaTrader to uh, have sent you the response and all those sorts of things. So I, uh, I've already taken care of that code for you. But in a nutshell, the things that we're going to uh, study as a result of writing this trading strategy are we're going to be able to use the get open trades functionality provided in the zero MQ connector uh, and we'll be able to send instructions so send trades to a MetaTrader and receive responses uh, from MetaTrader so it'll allow us to study all of this. These are the bare bones, the meat of the entire framework. So what better way to learn how to build one um, than this? Everything gets used, that's of importance. At, the, at a fundamental level, everything's fast. We've got trades closing after five seconds. We've got random buy or sells going on. Max number of trades to one, lot size set to 0 0.01, and each trader getting one symbol. Now, when I say each trader, we're going to select eight or nine symbols therefore we will have eight or nine traders accessing metatrader through our trading strategy that should be fun so that should with with a trade closing at five seconds uh and eight or nine traders sending eight or nine unique symbols to metatrader uh, using this fun trading strategy we should get quite a bit of information as to well what kind of load can we send what, what does it all look like in practice so now that we've discussed all of this, let's go straight to the code and then we'll start writing our strategy. So the first thing we want to take a look at is um, where ZeroMQ's output, well, where MetaTrader's output back to Python will be stored once it is received. And that is inside um, a variable called thread data output. Now this internal variable, internal class variable, holds any information that is received from MetaTrader by Python. And this storage happens because there is a thread running with our worker function DWXZMQ poll data for which you can read the code in this script. It's available on GitHub. And this poll data essentially performs two functions. It continuously polls the appropriate socket for information, be it in response to trading instructions or in response to market subscriptions. So because in, in this example, we're going to be trading only, we're going to be looking at the thread data output polling for information from this variable inside our trading strategy. So when we send an instruction to MetaTrader, that instruction will be in the form of a JSON uh, object. That JSON object will get parsed by MetaTrader. The MetaTrader will then send a response back and the Python application, the client, will store this information in this variable. So the first thing uh, as a result is for us to write a few functions um, based on what we discussed earlier. So we're going to be sending trades, we're going to be receiving responses, and we're going to be checking for how many trades are open because one of the stipulations in our example coin flip trading strategy here is to be able to hold one trade at a time uh, and also close the trades after five seconds. Naturally, for those two things, for, for us to be able to do those two things, we need to know how many trades are currently open, and we also need to know their open times. Uh, those, in, that in, those pieces of information will be sent to us by MetaTrader in response to an execution, so we need a script to be able to read them. The ZMQ uh, execution script is the first one that houses one function at the present time to help you expand on this in future. And that 
a function is called execute. In this function, what I've currently done is at the time of recording this tutorial on the 15th of March 2019, I've written one function that allows you to open and close um, a trade. And you can expand on this, you can completely change this, you can add more functions to this class. Uh, I will share this um, on GitHub as soon as this tutorial is complete. Now, in this function execute, we when we um, we can send a new trade instruction and we can close a trade by a ticket. So for us to be able to close a trade by a ticket number, we're going to need the ticket number. And, and the only way to retrieve that ticket number is by sending a get open trades instruction to MetaTrader via ZeroMQ. This therefore presents the need for us to have that functionality. So in the second class I've prepared for you, which is also in its initial stages and is completely extensible. You can do absolutely whatever you want with it. Also to be shared on GitHub after this tutorial uh, is DWX ZMQ reporting. And inside this, I've implemented a wrapper function for the get open trades, um, DWX MTX get all open trades function available in the ZeroMQ connector Python application that you already have access to. Uh, and in this function, what I'm essentially doing is I am sending an instruction to get all open trades. And then there's a few lines on uh, waiting for the response. And if there is a certain timeout that's exceeded, then you have to break out of waiting for the response, et cetera, et cetera. Remember, this is trading. So we have to be careful how we design things. If we are going to take a strategy live, these sorts of checks and balances are important to make sure that you never get yourself into a situation you can't get out of, especially if it's a trade you're sending. Imagine looping through a trade over and over and over again if you're constantly stuck in a loop like this, that would be a very bad move. So these sorts of checks allow us to get out of those situations. And finally, if we receive a valid response, then we check if there are any trades in that response. And if there are trades in that response, we construct a data frame and we send that pandas data frame back to the calling application. The calling application is our trading strategy that we haven't yet written. We're going to write that now. So we have get open trades inside DW, uh, DWXZMQ reporting. That's the first class. And we have the execute function, which is inside DWXZMQ execution, the second class. The two modules that I've prepared that serve as wrappers over the ZeroMQ connector uh, Python application, uh, which will communicate with the DWXZMQ server MetaTrader EA slash application. To put all of this together, I've also prepared a wrapper for our wrappers, which is a base class, DWX ZMQ strategy. And this class is extensible. You can, you can expand on this and pull this into any trading strategy where you can use the basic um, initialized variables to your advantage. Now, this is purely an example. You can modify this as you like, but for our purposes, I've created a base class where this class has um, the strategy, has a name. It has uh, a list of tuples and each tuple contains a symbol and the corresponding lot size. This is what is used for this particular introductory example. This isn't at all an efficient way to hold information regarding symbols and lot sizes that, that in future tutorials we will be doing completely different ways, uh, this in a completely different way. But for now, to, to do our coin flip trading example, we'll pass in a list of tuples containing a currency pair and the associated fixed lot size that we would like to use with that. And um, we'll also pass in the broker's GMT offset. This is important because if, uh, for instance, my environment is in UTC, and when I send a trading instruction, if I were to save my time, then that time will not correspond to the opening time of the instruction on MetaTrader because MetaTrader's open times correspond to the GMT offset on the broker. And in this case, my DarwinX GMT offset, DarwinX's GMT offset is three at the present time, uh, 15th of March, 2019 from UTC. So I have to enter three so that any time I check for that five second timeout, I need to make sure that I'm adding these three hours to my current UTC time in order to check correctly because the times returned by MetaTrader will have the GMT plus three offset. And I've added a flag for verbosity in case you want to see all the output coming through 0MQ, which I assure you will be a lot of JSON on your screen, uh, text JSON text on your screen. Um, for me, the default option uh, is false. 
Next, we have the assignment of the name, symbols, and broker GMT to internal class variables. And we will have one zero MQ connector shared by all um, our traders, quote unquote, inside the coin flip trading strategy we're going to write here shortly. This one zero MQ connector will be passing information to and from MetaTrader. Uh, then we have the two modules, ZMQ execution and reporting, and we're going to pass our singular zero MQ connector object to both of these so that they can send through their respective functions uh, the and receive outputs from MetaTrader and pass it back to our strategy object as and when we need it. Lastly, we have a run function, and this run function is where we're going to enter our strategy logic. I'm going to create uh, a new strategy um, class, and that class will essentially uh, inherit all of these variables from DWX ZMQ strategy. So I will override this function in my, in my coin flip trading strategy class that I'm about to write next. Right, so I've done the initial uh, work here that can be replicated by yourselves uh, in working on your own strategies using this formulation uh, in the DWX ZMQ strategy base class, or you can modify it to anything else you like. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I've written this basic uh, initializer code that you can copy and use uh, as you like. And what we're essentially doing is passing in the symbols and the corresponding fixed lot sizes that we would like to trade. We've passed in a name called coin flip traders. The delay represents the delay is a variable in seconds and represents the delay between each message we send to MetaTrader, which uh, at 0 0.1 seconds. The broker GMT is uh, three and verbosity is false because for, for me that would be too much text in one screen to talk about the code and have that text flying around on my screen at the same time. So. Uh, that's set to false. The maximum trades are one and the closed delta, which I'll show you uh, later on why I've put this here. I'll be using this later in the in deciding the close uh, is going is, is a number in seconds. And that represents how many seconds to wait before closing the trade. And that's it. We pass in uh, our variables. We set up some initializers. And this is, as we're going to be executing five traders concurrently, we're going to create a lock object here that uh, is going to be acquired by the trader currently in execution when they want to use the zero MQ object that is uh, universal to all traders. That's the same ZMQ object that everybody will be accessing. And that's pretty much it. Inside the run function for each symbol we find in symbols, we create a thread whose worker function has yet to be written. I've called it self dot underscore trader. This is the function where I'm going to be writing the, the logic that the trader will follow. And we're going to pass the trader two things. We're going to pass the trader a symbol and the number of the maximum number of trades that that trader can execute at any given time. We're also going to demonize the trader, <laughs> which means that the trader can run independently in the background and start that trader. And that's pretty much it. So uh, that completes the traders bit. And then finally, we'll have one more thread running, and that thread will. Uh, have its worker function as the updater. And this updater function will also acquire the lock at some point in time uh, um, alongside the traders and get the current response from 0MQ to just give us a visual on what's currently going on, uh, what is being transacted, etc. This is and by no means necessary. It's just a, a, a trivial thing that uh, we have here for the moment just to see what's actually crossing through in terms of JSON uh, commands being sent, responses being received, etc., etc. We have a stop function, and when you that's uh, when you execute that function, it will set market open to false. Each thread, as we will write here shortly in the trader uh, worker function, will be doing it doing anything while market open is set to true. If we set it to false, all threads will deactivate. And once they've deactivated, we will issue a join call to their respective threads to wait for them to finish. And we'll also issue a join call to the updater thread so that everybody goes home, quote unquote. And finally, we'll just execute a mass close all trades call through to zero MQ only for the purposes of this strategy. You don't have to issue a close, of course, in any other strategy just because. And that's it. So now let's write the function that will do all the trader's work.